you know? Huh. Okay. It was a lot bloodier. Like, I, I would say going the ladder with Hard Target, a lot of it was more bloodier, you know, like the, the shootout scenes and everything, but it was so fast-paced that you can't, you know... <laughs> it's not such a big difference that they would come down so hard on it. Because they still got our rating, right? Like, they still got, like... Yes. Clip, yeah, both of them still got our ratings. You know what? Speaking of Cliffhanger, of course, another movie that solo movie that came out the year that dealt with this whole PC concept is Demolition Man. Demolition Man kind of, kind of, kind of did what Deadpool did. It kind of made fun of that political correctness that was going on. Yeah. Yeah, and that here was PG-13. Demolition <laughs> Man. I saw that one in the theater. I remember that. That was PG-13. and Even Specialist got PG-13 here and I was, I was surprised. Wow. Yeah. Um, but then... Oh, go ahead. No, just... <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. What are you about to say? Oh. Oh, now I forgot now. <laughs> well, I was, I was saying that Demolition Man, in, at that time, it dealt, it dealt with that, with that, with that PC stuff that was going on. It was, it was kind of like with, kind of like with Deadpool at that time. Mm-hmm. Even, even like Cobra. Like, why would they give, like, I, I can understand why they would give Cobra the R, right? But when I look at it now, it's such a PG-13 movie. Like, for me, I would find it a PG-13 movie. Um, like, they didn't, they didn't even, they didn't even keep in a lot of the gore of Cobra, except for maybe that hook scene, you know? But, uh, I, I did some, I did the unrated version, um, and I, I think there's some people online that they're, they're, they're trying to release, a. Uh, get them to release a Blu-ray of the un- unrated cut. I did see the unrated cut cuts on on, on, on YouTube. Yeah, I, I got a cut of it that has all that stuff in it. The only thing it doesn't have is, like, the extended gore that apparently there was a, a lot of extended gore that got cut out. But uh, the version I have doesn't have that, but it has, like, everything else. It has all the scenes from the movie. It has all the deleted scenes. has all the TV scenes. Um, yeah. Hmm. So, it's it's one of those, you know, like, I, I don't know. I, I find the rating system is so stupid now. It's just, it's just ridiculous. They've been like that for years, man. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, going through uh, uh, Contra, how did you, how, how, okay, uh, starting with you, Matt, how did you first uh, discover Contra? How did you, how did you, for, how did you first discover Contra? Um, leading into that qu- answer, I would just like to finish by saying that I'm happy that Sly stuck to his guns with Rambo and gave us the fucking R-rated cut of Rambo, because they were going to do that to Rambo also. They wanted to take out the whole beginning to that movie, they wanted to take out uh, like a lot of the action and the ending, they wanted to take out a lot of the ending. So I'm happy that Sly stuck with his guns. But um, going into Contra, I was a big fan of Nintendo. Um, my parents uh, separated when I was really young, so I ended up getting a lot of these video game consoles as kind of uh, a babysitter technique, I would say. And kind of a... Um, I guess my dad making up for not being there. And I had this neighbor named Jason Brown. Um, his sister was actually the one who took me to see Lock Up. She was a, a babysitter of mine. Uh, same one who introduced me to Cornell But um, when Cornell moved to the neighborhood. But anyway, so I had this, um, this neighbor named Jason, and he had Contra. And I remember playing it for the first time over there, and I was so blown away. So, so blown away that um, I had to pick it up, like, right after that. Because, like, I was just so enamored in this, uh, in the 2D fight, uh, shooting style. And it was just, the, the music was great. Uh, the pace in the game was great. Um, I love the, the cheat code aspect and how, like, when, when I was playing with Jason, we played through the whole the whole seven or eight levels, you know. This is one of those games that I guess I, I beat, for my age, I beat the game really fast. 
and it was a great feel of accomplishment with that game, and it's such a game that you could just play over and over and over and over. And I love like I love the two player aspect to it, and just you know like just the vibe, the the feeling like it's so great to to have a game where you know at the time it felt very futuristic, you know like how you could jump between the different uh, platforms and you know it would switch to a uh, third point uh, third person view and then two D and then kind of like. You have those levels where you lay down and you shoot at the uh, at the red crystals. You know, like when you go into the base and you're like lying down and you're shooting up towards the the, the those light sensor things or whatever they are. And it was just like such a wild ride. You know, such a wild ride of a game. And yeah, for me, like I, I always, oh, I just always love that. I've always loved that game. It's probably it's got to be in my top five. Really, really far up there on my top five. How did you, when did you first hear that the two characters were modeled after uh, Schwarzenegger and Stallone? I think, psychologically, I kind of could see it already. It felt like a Rambo game, especially because you're running around, you know, with headbands and, and stuff like that. So, I, could, I guess, psychologically, I could all already put myself in that scenario. But, um, I guess once the internet came around, you know, we started getting memes, and that really cemented it in my head as, man, they should have made a movie based on that. And then, and then you see, like, all these, like, e even in the old artwork on the on the cartridge, there's a very H.R. Giger look to it. You can definitely see it as a, a James Cameron movie in your head, you know, because, um, like, you know, when you get to the end of the game and you're fighting that big hardish alien thing and the face huggers are jumping out at you? And uh, jumping out of the edge? Yeah, it just felt like an alien, like a, like a Rambo Commando alien game. Yeah, and uh, Predator as well, there's some, because there are some aliens that, there's one, one uh, level where the boss looks like the queen alien and the predator and, and other and the, it was, if you look at it, it kind of it, it kind of it was kind of like Kung Fury because it took all this stuff that was so popular in the eighties like yeah. these uh, these hardcore action heroes and you know, these aliens them fighting these aliens they took what was popular around that time and they put it in this game. Yeah, definitely. It definitely is like wow. You know some of the levels where you have to like watch out for those spiky truck things and, and the guys with the football helmets on very predator looking like like you were saying before and it's just wow it was just I never I, I never thought I would ever experience a game like that you know like I was used to playing Mario and and Ragar and you know stuff like that so yeah, that's, that's interesting. You mentioned uh, uh, Mario Brothers and games like that because before before content it if you look at Contra led the way for hardcore action games in the first way how we talked about Rambo if Rambo wouldn't have died we wouldn't have hardcore action movies I believe if Contra didn't exist we wouldn't have hardcore action games like like uh, Halo or Gears yeah. of War the, the the first part of hardcore action games because before that was all these games like these kiddie games like Super Mario Brothers and Donkey Kong but Contra kind of changed all that it kind of led the way for the two-player, uh, a scroll, scroll here uh, type of games. That's like, like we uh, you usually saw that in arcade games when you go to the arcade. It wasn't the tag, the tag team format. Like, if you had like your thirty lives and you ran out of lives, you could still take your friend's life. Didn't they have that in there? I'm pretty I sure they, they did. had that. I'm pretty sure they had that. And yeah, like apart from that, you know, I was playing like what, like Donkey, uh, Duck Hunt. Donkey Kong and, and and Mario and there's just so much you can do with that fucking dog laughing at you in a duck hunt you know wish you could shoot that dog fuck you know there, I walk I walk I walk I watch YouTube and they and they actually hack it's amazing what they do with these old games they actually hack the game and you can actually shoot shoot the dog <laughs> good I fucking hate that. <laughs> But yeah, Contra, oh, they missed out on it. I was talking to Alex about it yesterday, and 
I could so see them doing it as a James Cameron movie, even now. When you look at the, the, the back storyline with, like, Habit being in the future and all that stuff, you could do you could do a scenario now where they could bring Arnold and Sly in, um, or even do it as an animated film with Sly and Arnold's voice. And could you imagine... Could you imagine, like, a dual suit-up scene with Arnold and Sly? Absolutely. Putting all their weapons on? Not, not just their voice, but ha- add, put them in those uh, motion captures so, like they captured their movement. So, so like they're actually in the movie what James Cameron did with Avatar. He should he should save that stuff what he did for Avatar for Contra. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he should have done. And I could definitely see them shooting up at, at one shot and the other shot like they did in their movie. It would be epic for me if they put it in the film. Yeah, that would be that would be genius. That'd be so genius. Uh, uh, John, I know you haven't played Contra, but do you remember the, how the first time you heard about it? That's for you guys, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that's probably the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great game. You can go, like, go in the water and, and you know, jump from platform to platform. And I love how, how, how they have those over... Almost like, almost like, uh, like care packages are are dropped that soar by where you can like shoot your gun at them and then your gun turns into whatever is on the care package. Like you got like the spread gun where you shoot like around and it just spreads out and you can kill like twenty, like ten guys with it, or like the flamethrower. Yeah, yeah, the spread gun is the most popular. I remember I've seen a lot of game. I say a lot of people were viewing the game, how popular it became, and it, and it said it led the way for the spread gun. How you can you can you can switch to other guns. I think that's the, it was the first. That's why it's so popular. It was like the first game to do something like that. How you can start from a regular gun to another gun, and the spread gun was popular because you can shoot more than one bullet at the same time. That's, I think that's why so like why the game is so popular is because of that. Yeah, NECA actually released figures. Of Scorpion and Mad Dog, and they have like the spread gun, like, and it shows like a round being fired off, but it's like a, it's like an action figure, but it has like all the, the spread bullets shooting out of di- like different, angles. they're all connected by wire. It's pretty cool. I think I have a picture of it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will. Okay, I'm gonna say uh, my my first memories of Contra was uh, one, the first time I heard about it is is back when, and this was before we had uh, the game apps that you can play apps on your phone or a, ti- a tablet. They had, I'm sure you remember the, the those Tiger electronic uh, games. Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tiger Electronics, yeah. You can play, you can play handheld games that you, you, that you, that you, that you, that you can play. Yeah. Uh, are you messaging me, John? Yeah. I'm trying to, it's not, re- it's not picking it up. 